Hi. Welcome to Drinking the Kool-Aid. Welcome. I'm Megan. I'm Hannah. And... I'm taking over! She's got a spooky ooky story. Oh, it's spooky ooky. Spooky ooky. Oh, I feel like that's like an extra, extra spooky. Yeah. I don't know if that... Well, yeah, well... Does that we'll apply? With, yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, it totally does. We'll go with it. Hannah's been trying to get me hyped up for this story, and she showed me a picture, and she was like, oh my gosh, I'm covering this story. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what it is. Yeah, okay, well, I straight <laughs> up thought she was going to. And so I, like, showed her a picture of a model of it, and she was just, like, looking at me blankly. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I guess not. Yeah. But I am really excited to do this one. Um, This is one I heard on... Personally, my favorite podcast, the, 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 of course, other than ours. <laughs> but um, it's I originally heard it on, the, and that's why we drink. And I immediately stored it up in my brain, and it's just been chilling in there, waiting to come out. Mm. So here we are. Okay. <laughs> All right, just gonna throw this out there, like I usually do, just just in case. Um. You can always slow me down because I do have a tendency to be a little bit of a fast talker. So there is a button to slow me down somewhere. There's a button. (laughs) You can do it if you need to. Okay, so 226 Pearl Street, Council Bluffs, Iowa. Squirrel Cage Jail. Dun, dun, dun! Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Originally known as Pottawatomie County Jail. Built in 1885 and used all the way until 1969, Squirrel Cage Jail is the only jail of its type that was built three stories tall and one of only 18 of these types of jails. From the outside, you would never know that it was a jail. Architects Eckel and Mann designed the beautiful Victorian-style um, exterior of the building. It literally, it, not even kidding, it does not look like a jail. <laughs> I will post the picture um, for everybody to see, but... Straight up, looks like a mansion, not a jail. (laughs) So on the inside, the front of the jail consisted of a kitchen, trustee cells, quarters for women, and offices for the jailer. This all, of course, sounds pretty normal, right? I mean, sounding normal. I would say so. (laughs) But this is where things get cool. You are getting way too excited about it. I know, I can't. This story, (laughs) I love this one. Okay. (laughs) So the rest of the jail, um, and then just like tell me if I'm not explaining this. Like if you don't understand it, once I've explained it, I'll try to explain it in different words. Okay. Um, it's not like the. It's a little bit difficult to explain. All right. Um, so it is set up like a giant lazy Susan. There is a giant circular cage around all of the cells okay and then there's 10 pie shaped cells per level inside of that cage okay there is one single door on all three levels and a hand crank would be turned and the whole jail would spin until each cell lined up with that single door individually are you gonna like give us an explanation as to why it's set up this way yeah okay yep, good. i absolutely will okay but did that did that make sense yep okay cool So, like, they're yeah, they're literally moving that whole building just to line that one single door up with whichever cell they need to get in it into at the time. It already sounds bad. (laughs) Does it? Yeah. (laughs) This isn't a good idea. (laughs) Well, so this is actually how um, the jail got its name, like, Squirrel Cage Jail, is because, um, have you ever seen, like... On a um, maybe bird feeder, people will put like a circular cage around it, uh-huh. and the squirrel jumps onto it and it spins. Oh, it's a squirrel cage. Sure. So that's how the jail got its nickname, Squirrel Cage Jail. Okay. Okay, so there is a fourth floor, but that was not one of the like um, main rotating floors. That was um, made for the living quarters for the jailer and his family. Uh, living there wasn't said to be great, though, as, like, the sewer system had a lot of issues, so it usually stunk pretty bad, and it was really loud, as it was literally just above the inmates, and it was loud all over the entire jail regardless, because the entire thing was made of steel, so it was just, like, horribly loud everywhere. Um, the jailer and his wife would be the only two employees working at the jail. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Him taking care of the prisoners while she would take care of the cooking. 
Yes, you heard that correctly. One jailer for pr- all the prisoners. <laughs> uh, and I can't imagine. So, like, if you're living above that and it's steel, it it's echoes. certainly not going to be quiet when it spins. No, no. And the whole thing echoes like they, everybody was just saying it echoes super, super badly in there. Do we know how often it spins? Like, oh, is there a time frame? Yeah, no, I'll get there. Okay, cool. It was actually on a continuous rotation for quite a while. Yeah. It would, like, rotate nonstop. Oh. And then for a while, too, like, they would, they could shut that down and sometimes just rotate it when they needed to check on prisoners or get to, like, a certain cell or whatever. But, yeah, a lot of times it was rotating. I wonder, like, how fast it was going, too, because if it was too Not much. Not very fast. Like, you could get really sick from that. Yeah, so. I can't imagine it was great, but it doesn't... I I didn't... It's not like a carnival ride. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I, don't, I don't think it went very fast at all. I'm Sure, I'm sure it didn't. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think if I remember correctly, I read somewhere that it takes, like, five minutes for a solid rotation around the entire... Like, for an entire rotation. Got it. And that's, like, without stopping. Sure, okay. So... I mean, it's it's not fast, but it's definitely noticeable. <laughs> yeah. So William H. Brown and Benjamin F. And I am not even going to try to say this last name because I just don't know how to pronounce it and I don't want to be yelled at. So I'm just <laughs> going to spell it. <laughs> it's H-A-U-G-H. Um, invented the desi- design this way for, quote, maximum security with minimum jailer attention. And, quote, the object of our invention is to produce a jail in which prisoners can be controlled without the necessity of personal contact between them and the jailer. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. They're not off to a great start. <laughs> I I just don't see how that's going to work. Right. Because their literal goal is, like, um, be able to only have access one prisoner at a time. Sure. So that they only had to have that one jailer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, only in one door and one door out. So it's basically impossible to escape. Well, that was like why they made this design. Um, there is an emergency access hatch, but it was very difficult to get to. And only one prisoner did actually climb up it, but realized it didn't lead outside. And he had to wake the jailer up to let him back into his cell. <laughs> like, can you imagine like, yo, homie, uh... Sorry, I tried to escape. Can you just plop me back in there real quick? It's fine. (laughs) Yeah. So the design was supposed to cut down on costs as they only needed those two employees to be able to run it. Um, Which, like I said earlier, no, it was the jailer and his wife. But to be able to hold more inmates. So this was actually supposed to be one of the safest jails at the time. Yeah. (laughs) The theory was that if the jail was constantly rotating, inmates would be on their best behavior because you never knew when the door of the jailer would go by. Which, Um. like, it's it's, it's a good theory, but, like, keyword theory, because, like, like I said, you know, it takes a good solid couple minutes to rotate entirely. Like, what if something's happening in, like, one of those cells, you know what I mean? And you, you can't get to it. Yeah, it's exactly what I was going to bring up. I was honestly just waiting for you to finish your sentence because I was like, this doesn't feel yeah. safe. Like, if there's an emergency, what are you going to do? And that's exactly it. Like, say there's somebody getting attacked in their cell, like... Yeah. And, it, I mean, it, also, obviously you're passing that door, but, like, you know if you just passed it, you got time. Right. That you're not going to pass it again for a little while. Like, yeah. Not the Not the best idea. Uh, <laughs> I'll just say that. There's always loopholes there is. in prison. And actually, speaking of loopholes, oh. even though it was designed to not be able to be escaped from, we all know prisoners can be real creative. What? And they did have a few escapes over the years. Okay. Um, I wasn't able to find the years on this, and I feel like a couple of them um, were probably in the later years, and you'll find out why. But I'm going to guess that the ones that kind of just walked out were part of the later years. Okay. Um, but they had a couple escape through the walls, um, a few through the roof, and a couple of them just walked right out the front door. <laughs> and 
Two men figured out how, how to pry the base of a toilet up and crawled into the floor. Oh, my God. Through the sewage tunnel. Stop. But they were both caught. <laughs> Again, going through a sewage tunnel and then getting caught. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> so, um... As you can imagine, you know how I was saying about the pie-shaped cells earlier that yep. are on each level? As you can imagine, a pie-shaped cell is not very big. Um, in fact, they were quite small and very cramped. They were about 10 feet long and only about 5 feet wide at its absolute widest point. Oh. Yeah. And, I mean, people were, like, living in these. I mean, they, they were their cells. People were living in these itty-bitty cells and each cell had a toilet and a bunk and they were made to hold two people but some sources said they'd cram as many as six in there are you kidding which i mean you literally wouldn't even be able to move you know you would literally just be standing there having to like rotate who moves where wow yeah i it, yeah it's bad <laughs> Um, there was no electricity, so it could get really, really hot in the summer and really, really cold in the winter. Oh my god, in the summer, mm -hmm. everyone would be stinking so bad. On top of the sewage issues. Oh my gosh. And I was just about to get to that, actually. <laughs> and so the jail was actually considered pretty advanced because they had flushing toilets in each cell. Whoa! Um, <laughs> but it was like... Not a toilet that you would see now, obviously. It was, yeah. like, a literal hole in the wall. Um, uh, Like, got updated as, like, the years went on. But, like, when they started, it was just, like, the holes in the wall. So, um, and there will be a picture of that, too. You can see it in the cell in the back of it. So, the problem was with, like, the fact that they had the toilets and everything in there was that they didn't have great ventilation. So, it stunk a lot. And those smells, of course, would rise up to the jailer's quarters and all over the jail. And then, like, you're stuck in those tiny... Yeah, I can't imagine any of it smelled good. No. <laughs> um, the other problem was that the toilets actually raised controversy as people believed the prisoners were being coddled because they had working toilets when a lot of townspeople did not. Oh, my like, God. Yeah, they're being coddled as they're crammed into these itty-bitty, tiny, like, non-stop rotating cells. Okay. <laughs> wow, just because they have a toilet. <laughs> right. So... Luxurious. There was, like, people that cared about that, and there was the other people that cared about the safety of the jail, so thank you for caring about that, at least. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'll get into the safety issues in just a minute. Okay. <laughs> this actually led to citizens signing a petition in 1910 asking voters for $75,000 to build a new jail. It was not passed. A new jail was not <laughs> built. Okay. And Squirrel Cage would go on for another 40 years, literally because it was the cheaper option and nobody wanted to pay for a new jail. Oh, so this thing went on for a oh, while. Yeah. yeah, a long time. Yikes. So there was a solitary, solitary confinement cell, okay? I'm not even kidding. I The picture of this also will be posted, and I'm telling you what, like literal disbelief when I saw it. Okay. Um, it's about six feet tall, two and a half feet wide, and two feet deep. What? It's, you're literally shoulder to shoulder if you walk in, and if you're, like, a bigger person, like, you have, like, muscles, anything, like, you are really shoulder to shoulder in there. Um, the cell has one steel door on one side and bars on the other. That's it. You turn around, steel door, turn around in the other, turn around again, bars. Okay, if you're claustrophobic, yeah, that would just like blow your mind apart. I absolutely cannot imagine. Um, and you could spend anywhere. Oh, oh, I should mention too, because this uh it was a solitary cell, it was like further away from the rest, so this is actually like one of the coldest places because of that. So like you're stuck in this tiny place, probably freezing. Yeah. Um and you could be stuck in there from anywhere from 30 minutes to the longest time they have on record, which was 10 days. Shut up. Yeah. I can't. And the thing is, is there's not even like a bunk in there because there's not, there's not a place for a bunk. There's like literally not room. So you would just be sleeping like in a ball on the floor. 
if you can fit in right. a ball on the floor, right. exactly. you're probably or just sitting. Yeah. yeah. So as we've already probably considered, this design had some real bad flaws. No. Um, they actually own, like, they started having issues only a few years after opening. Um, and a lot of the, the jails that were opened like this were shut down pretty much immediately after being opened. Mm -hmm. So it's actually crazy that this one went on as long as it did. Um, one of the major issues being fire safety. Oh. Because how in the hell are you going to have time? To sit in there and crank each prisoner a prisoner out individually when the building is on fire. I mean, it would literally, it would be impossible. There would be so many casualties. It's so bad. It's, it's so bad. I'm just trying to imagine it. It's so bad. And if that fire reaches any of the mechanisms, then yeah. you're really screwed. Yeah. So, like, yeah. There's that one. <laughs> um... Being such a massive rotating building, things broke down pretty quickly and a lot. It was also very um, difficult to keep it balanced properly. So, like, when it was first built, there was a water motor that assisted it, um, insisted, like, the rotation of the cells. But it only lasted between 5 and 20 years before breaking down, which meant the jailer would have to hand crank the entire building so one single jailer would have to crank this 90,000 pound structure anytime he needed access to anybody and 90,000 pounds as in when it was empty so like all the prisoners bunks everything would have added even more weight and like granted it was on a you know a turning mechanism to like make it obviously so he could do it I can't imagine that was very easy <laughs> uh -huh. that's a lot of weight that's a lot so over time, the constant rotating caused the building and mechanisms to actually, like, start to shift and, and from it being unbalanced. And this would actually leave prisoners trapped and stuck until they could get it rotating again. So, like, that's so much worse than you already have in your head because then you're thinking, like, dehydration. You can't get them food. You can't get them anything. If something is going down in the cell, you can't get to it. Like, they're literally stuck. You cannot move. You There's no access to them. I just don't understand how this thing kept going when they realized that there were so many issues. I know it. And it's it's all because it was the cheaper option. They just didn't... They, they didn't want to have to pay for another jail. That's disgusting. So, another safety issue. <laughs> um... The rotation caused a lot of broken bones and severed arms and legs. Though a majority were accidental, some were due to people literally thinking if they stuck their arm out for the, and caught the rotation and broke their arm or leg or whatever bone it was, that they could escape en route to the hospital. Oh. Yeah. So they would literally just stick their arms out right out of the bars and as the jail rotated, yep. Oh, my God. Yep. I'm imagining, like, the crunch of that. <laughs> oh. Um, so, like, another major problem here was, like, the sorting of the prisoners. Um, so, like, the third floor held the worst. Um, that was max security level. The second was where, like, the crimes were kind of, you know, stuck in the middle. Like, not bad enough to be on three, but not just bad enough to not be on one, two. Okay. Um, and then level one was, like super petty crimes like you were out for a night out and you accidentally stole something or accidentally well you stole something or you know like from a store or something like that but like the problem there is that to say example like a major bank crime person you know could end up with a serial killer and they would be unsupervised until that rotation came back around again whoa <laughs> yep um, and we, and in speaking of that, we did have some inf uh, infamous prisoners. Tell me. That served time here, including bank robber George Babyface Nelson. Oh, man. Which is a name a lot of you will probably recognize. Oh, yeah. He spent a whole 12 days there. Oh, that's it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and then there's Jake Bird. So, he's also known as the Tacoma Axe Killer. 
He traveled as a railroad worker and is suspected of killing between 40 and 50 people through Western and Midwestern states with an axe. Do we know how long he was in there? Um, that I don't think I know how long, but That's okay. he's going to come back around a bunch. Fun. <laughs> um, the number of people he actually killed, like, is kind of unknown. A lot of sources were all over, so I just put between 40 and 50. Um, but the main one I saw was 46. So his stay in, um, at the jail was actually due to him being caught after brutally attacking a couple from Iowa in 1928. Their names were Harold and Mary Stribling. They miraculously survived this attack. Unfortunately, several years later, Harold shot himself in the head along with his wife, Mary. But Mary again freaking survived. What a badass. Right? How on (sighs) earth? Like, those are two horrifying things. I know. I know. She got attacked by a serial killer with an axe and then shot in the head by her husband and both times. Wow. Yeah, both times she survived. That's incredible. Harold did not survive this one, though. Um, it was just her. Okay. So I only mentioned the second part because it's about to come back around in a second. He was released and continued killing until he was caught for an axe murder of a mother and a daughter in Washington, and he was sentenced to death. After Bird's conviction, he was allowed to speak while at the hearing, and he said, are you freaking ready for this? I'm ready. I don't know if you are. (laughs) He said, quote, I'm putting the Jake Bird hex on all of you who had anything to do with me or with my being punished. Mark my words. You will die before I do. Guess what? They died. Six people that were involved or tied into this case ended up dying within a year of him saying that. Oh, my God. And this is where it comes back around about the striblings. Okay. Because a lot of people believe the Jake Bird hex got them because they were able to survive. Oh. When he tried to kill them. Got it. Uh Uh-huh. Whoa. So there were actually, I know this is actually really shocking to me. After everything I've said, like, I really thought there was going to be more deaths. But there's actually only four, like, known deaths at the jail. Um, the first death, and I just want to say, like, I don't, a couple of these aren't in chronological order. I think the last one definitely is, but, like, for the, like, first two or two or three, I think, I didn't, no, it was the first two. I just didn't, I couldn't find the dates on them. Okay. So, the first death was someone that had tried to crawl up to the ceiling to carve his name. He fell three stories to his death. That's the only reason he was... Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, because it's, like, known that, like, a lot of people carve their names into the ceiling of this place, so... Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he apparently wanted to be part of them, and it did not end well. Oh. Yeah. Hopefully he got, like, an initial up there or something before he fell. Yeah, that's a bad way to go. <laughs> um, the second was a guy named Thomas Rifle. He was in love with a lady in town, but she was like, no way, Jose. <laughs> she didn't want him <laughs> and so he refused to leave her alone and was told by the sheriff it, like you're gonna be arrested homie if you don't stop guess what didn't stop he was arrested and he basically said if i can't have her then i don't want to go on living and he hung himself by tying a laundry rope Uh-oh. or like a clothesline um to his neck and to the other end of the bars. Oh, no. And use it to suffocate Stand. himself as the jail rotated. Okay. Th- that would be horrible. That, I know. There's no way that goes quick. I know. I can't imagine it If it's it spinning so slow. Yep. I can't imagine it was fast. Oh. No. No. But he was not living without that lady. Okay. Um. The third was an officer that was brought in to help this. Man, this is chaos. The, f- the third was an officer that was brought in to help um, the sheriff during the farmer's holiday strike in 1932. And if you don't know what that is, I'm just going to give you guys like a quick blurb to explain it. Um, so basically, farmers didn't feel that they were being paid enough to bring like grain and produce into town. So they stopped doing it because they were like, y'all are going to pay us more. The sheriff, Percy Laneson, or Lanson crap. I think it might have been Lanson, to be honest. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Lanson. 
Um, Percy Lanson was sent in to fix the problem, which he did so by hiring different farmers. He was like, screw you guys. Like, I got my own. I got other farmers. It's all good. (laughs) So this super pissed off the old farmers, and they started creating roadblocks, putting spikes on two-by-fours, knocking telephone poles and trees down, arming themselves with weapons like baseball bats, literally anything they could do to push the new farmers' trucks off the road. So that, like, new produce could not be brought into the town. They weren't playing around. No, they wow. seriously were not. And they, you were about to find out they really weren't playing around. Okay. So, like, Percy wasn't having it. And once it got to this point, like, he was pissed. He he was allowing peaceful protesting, but it had obviously been taken too far at this point. So he arrested and housed in the already cramped jail between 100 and 160 farmers. You've got to be kidding me i wish i was i can't even begin to imagine how cramped that got my god um and he actually only had around six to eight deputies at this time so he had to swear in about like a hundred more um of like various branches like you know police army that type of stuff because as other farmers found out like, their friends got arrested, they plotted to storm the jail to break the farmers out. (laughs) So, yeah. Unfortunately, while demonstrating how to discharge the riot guns, an officer, um, Claude Dale, was accidentally shot in the stomach and killed. And, like, it was really bad because, like, this was a bad situation, and thank God it ended the way it did. Like, obviously, it sucks that, like, he died, but Thank God that it it didn't escalate because had they stormed the prison, I'm sure that they could have broken them out because there was a lot more farmers than there were, you know, sheriffs at first. Sure. But thank thank goodness for them bringing in everybody because they were able to get everybody under control and disperse the crowds. Um, So everything was good. Yeah, they, they probably would have, like, let out more than just the farmers by right. accident. Yeah. So they did not end up storming it, but it was, like, super chaotic, and, like, the sheriff was really scared for obvious reasons. It was a really bad situation. The pettiness level is so high on this. No, I know it. I know it. (laughs) They're like, yeah, you're not allowed to bring in produce. Screw it. Oh, gosh. So the fourth and final death was in 1960 when a prisoner died of a heart attack, but it took two whole days to get to him oh. because there was a rotary malfunction. Yep. His body was literally just stuck there for two days. So who knows if he could have actually survived had he got right. medical attention oh, right yeah, away. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but this actually led the jail's rotation system to be shut down permanently for safety reasons. Oh, you don't say. Right. But see, the problem is they... Basically, just kind of released the prisoners into the surrounding corridors because they no longer had a way to access each cell. So they were literally just, like, free and wandering, and they basically did whatever they wanted. There's actually patched holes in the walls, and it's said to be from the prisoners trying to tunnel their way to escaping. So... Like, while the um, single jailer, because remember, there's only one jailer, now now none of them are locked in their cells. Now they're all free to roam each level. Yeah, how are we going to go right, about there's, that? There's <laughs> nothing you can do at this point. I mean, he's outnumbered, like, severely outnumbered. So they said that, like, he would literally just sit downstairs and watch TV as people were trying to tunnel out the walls. Because there's, I mean... What I, else can you yeah, do? Yeah, there's literally nothing else you can do. I mean, maybe hire <laughs> some leave. employees. Yeah, I mean, you could leave. I mean, there's, there's not many options when you're in one single jailer and you've got that many prisoners on your hands that are just wandering. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> so they did, however, in 1969, shut down entirely and transfer the remaining prisoners to, di- like, different facilities. 1969? Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> what yeah so like, it, the rotary got shut down in 1960 and they didn't shut down the jail until 1969 okay yeah so squirrel cage jail or squirrel cage i guess i should say because i don't know 
it's now a museum. So I don't know if I should say, I guess it is still a jail. The squirrel cage jail (laughs) is, uh, is now a, um, a museum and it's, it's still obviously can't rotate. They're never going to be able to rotate it again for like safety reasons. But, um, they actually set it up to look like it used to in the early 1900s. Um, it was restored a little while back to look this way. So they added, like, the bunks, the pillows, the clotheslines, like, all the stuff that you would have seen in the early 1900s. They added those into the cells to, like, give it a more genuine experience. So you can walk through the halls and see inside the cells and read the stories that go along with them. Um, They do paranormal tours, of course, and you can rent the whole building overnight for either four or eight hours, if you please. Hard pass. Yeah, I do not please. I do not want anything to do with that. (laughs) I do not please. I'll I'll visit during the day, but that's about it. I'm good. Yeah, I would not be staying there for too long. (laughs) So, fun fact, I couldn't find the year that this happened, but I know it wasn't too horribly long ago. Um... A museum employee said that they actually hosted a family reunion of the great, great, great grandchildren and relatives of a former jailer and his wife. And the family wanted to see what a day in the life of their ancestors would have, like, looked like working in the jail. Oh. So they literally did their family reunion at the jail and did, like, a little history lesson slash family reunion. That's actually really cool. I think it's amazing. (laughs) I love it. I was like, that's, like, the coolest freaking thing ever. Like, if you're going to have a family reunion, that is the way to do it. Yeah. What a great, like, educational (laughs) experience. I know it. (laughs) I just think it's really freaking cool. Yeah. Um, They do have a couple cool displays. They have, like, a dummy of, like, Jake Bird in his old cell. Okay. Um, And the rope of the last person to be hanged in the state of Iowa. No. Which was Charles Noel Brown, or, yep, Noel Brown, sorry, who went on a three-day drunken murder spree before being caught and hanged on July 24th, 1962. Um, who the hell thinks to save the rope? Um, that's a good question. I don't know, but the news is, yeah, it's chilling in the museum. I don't like that at all. I don't know, I think it's kind of cool, but also creepy at the same time. That's why I think it's cool, I think. That thing has got to be, like... I can't Haunted imagine it's good. as hell. Yeah, I can't imagine it brings good energy. No. <laughs> um, you can also see names, signatures, and drawings dating all the way back to the 30s on the walls and ceiling from inmates that were there at some point, which, you know, was what that one dude was trying to do yeah. that fell to his death. Um, and then, like, just for a second, I was going to jump back to, like, how small those cells were because I was just like, I cannot stress how, like, this enough, like, how awful that must have been. But, like, employees literally said that when people enter the museum and see the cells, especially the um, solitary confinement, they literally, like, are in shock. Yeah. Because of how tiny these living quarters really are. So that's it for the history, and now it's time to get to the spooky ookies. Spooky (laughs) ookies! So the first sign of hauntings was, like, um, was actually... (laughs) You know, like, most hauntings always are, like, I don't know, like, I feel like they're not, well, the building is necessarily in operation still, but, like, they started here while it was still in operation. Oh. So, they started um in the 1950s. Jailer Bill Foster, I almost said Biller. <laughs> Jailer Bill Foster opted to sleep on the second floor instead of in the jailer's apartment because he heard a lot of strange noises coming from it. Including footsteps of someone walking around upstairs when no one was up there. Probably the jailer pe- or the prisoners escaping. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the 1950s, so oh, they were they weren't getting there. They weren't escaping yet. Okay. <laughs> well, they might maybe a couple. I don't know. Some people believe that this spirit that walks around up there is um the spirit of J. M. Carter who had overseen the building's construction and was the first resident to stay in that apartment. Oh. Museum staff have seen dark shadows moving across doorways, heard footsteps, whispers, voices, and doors moving. They say that the most, um, or they say that most people that have worked there have heard, like, some strange noise 
that shouldn't have been happening in an empty building at some point. Like, it's, like, unheard of to work there and not hear something. On the fourth floor, there's been an apparition scene who is believed to be Otto Gufoff, a former jailer. And one thing staff did say about this, like, particular spirit was that they felt it's friendly and it hasn't ever made the, anybody feel like they were in danger. Mm-hmm. Um, one, staff met, one staff member actually admitted that he didn't believe in ghosts, but he was a little less sure about that since he's been working at the museum. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, people see strange lights, black masses, feel like they're being watched or followed, or like someone is standing behind them. But when they turn around, no one's there. And some have a hard time breathing, especially on the third and fourth floors, and specifically in front of Jake Bird's cell, of course. Told you it was going to come back to him a bunch, man. Investigators have captured EVPs, and if you don't know what that is, it's just, it's just an, uh, basically an audio recording um, that can pick up spirits. So they have captured disembodied voices and strange unexplained noises, along with pictures and videos of dark figures and shadows. People feel the hair on the back of their neck stand up a lot, like, just randomly. They'll just be walking all of a sudden, that hair standing up. There is a music box in the jailer's apartment that plays by itself, and I really just fucking hate that. <laughs> I hate haunted music boxes I know, I hate so music. much. I hate music boxes in general. <laughs> because they're always creepy. I know! Like, every time you see one in a show, it's not anything happy no, that happens. No, it never so, yeah, I really hate that one. I mean, I'm like, I just named, like, so many things, and I'm like, this fucking music box. Like, yeah. screw this thing. Right? <laughs> um, people have reported feeling, like, a great sadness um, when they're standing in some of the cells. They have seen items move on their own. Some have felt like somebody tugging at them or a hand on their shoulder when no one else is in the room. Um, some have even felt, like, a physical pain at random spots in their body. At one point, there was a lady working after hours in the building on a project. As she was walking through the jail, she saw a little girl dressed completely in gray who looked really sad. Said little girl was behind bars in one of the cells that was locked up with no access. This little girl's voice is heard in very part or various parts of the building, but... <laughs> You want to know what other spirits are noticed in various parts of the building? Of course. Two ghost cats! <gasps> Shut up. <laughs> I'm so... I, like, literally got so excited when I when I heard about them. And one of the workers literally was like, these are my favorite spirits. Like, <laughs> same girl, same. Why would a little girl be there, though? You know, I actually don't know. And I tried to listen to a bunch of stuff on it and see if maybe somebody said something about... Um, maybe something that was close by. Yeah. But I didn't see anything. But, I mean, my guess is is that because of how much energy this place had, had she been nearby when she passed, I mean, her energy definitely could have been pulled there. Sure. Yeah. Interesting. That's my best guess. I- I'm not sure. Okay. Um, because there's also actually a little boy that's been seen multiple times, too. So, I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Museum employees said that sometimes people will walk in for a tour, turn around, and walk their asses right back out because they literally are, like, that scared and uncomfortable. Or, like, they'll get a feeling when they walk in the door and they're like, nope, they nope right out of there. They can't do it. No, thank you. <laughs> Not today. Um, Some people believe that uh, Thomas Rifle, the man who killed himself, sticks around and people have actually seen him walking in his cell or near it like full body apparition of him like they can identify him surely because they see him like that clear okay and then i of course watched the episode of ghost adventures on this of course <laughs> it's actually part of the mini series which is ghost adventures serial killer spirits the episode is called axe killer jail in the episode, they, like, the, this kind of really had no relevance, but I, I just had to put it in there anyway because it was cool. <laughs> they found a, they got to, like, see a secret room that's right off of the jailer's apartment. And it didn't have, like, a door or anything. Like, she literally had to, like, lift up a painting off the wall and there was a hole in the wall that you could see through and see the room. 
And, like, nothing came of it. I just thought it was really cool to throw in there because I feel like something will eventually come of that. Yeah, like, I, to explain what it is. Yeah, I feel like secret rooms are never a, a good thing when it comes to stuff like this. Especially in a haunted place. Right. And then there was a guy named Byron Gamble who was talking about a time that him and his friend had gone up to the jailer's apartment his friend convinced him to sit in a rocking chair and make an attempt to, like, talk to the spirits, just see what he could do. Uh, so he sat down and he said hello loudly three times. On the third hello, a book shot off the shelf behind him. He said it fell, like, with a horribly loud bang. And he immediately, like, as soon as he heard that, he immediately felt another presence in the room. As in, like, he literally said, I went from feeling like there was two people to three. There was somebody there that shouldn't be. Oh. Yeah. And he had the feeling that he shouldn't be there. So <laughs> he actually had nightmares about this, unfortunately, too, for months. Um, He kept having nightmares that he was sitting back in that chair again and that the book would fall and then he would get that horrible feeling again. And then you would wake up from it. Oh, it was, like, that traumatic. Yeah. And you okay. just have to wonder if something maybe attached itself to him. Yeah. Or something along those lines that, you know, he took something home he wasn't, he didn't mean to. Oops. Yeah. Just because it, it really did plague him for quite some time. Oh. He did go on to say, though, that the experience, like, the whole experience um, made him a believer of the paranormal. There you go. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I really wasn't necessarily a believer before, but he's like, I sure as hell am now. Okay. Um, there was also a jail security camera technician. That was a mouthful. Um, Greg Jones, who actually felt the floor and stairs that led up to the jailer's apartment shaking, like the whole ass staircase. And it's actually not really possible because, like I said, the whole entire building is made of steel, including the staircase and floor. And he, like, said, like, you would have, like, even if you rammed a truck into it, it wouldn't move just sure. because it's so solid. Yeah. And the whole floor and staircase were, like, shaking. And they did clarify, not an earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Just for the record. <laughs> um, That and this actually, like, this whole experience recurred recurred okay occurred right after he installed brand new cameras directly in front of jake bird's cell oh so he was pissed huh yeah he pissed he pissed jake bird off he did okay he said it terrified the absolute heck out of him and he pieced the fuck out yeah <laughs> he was like he laid that out he was like i love working at this place and i love my job but that was too terrifying <laughs> and i would have done the same. Yeah. And then when the team went down to the basement, they got a very, very, very clear EVP, actually multiple, um, that said, get out of basement. Bye. <laughs> Much like I'm going to do right now, because this is the end of the squirrel cage jail story. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that was a good ending. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was pretty proud of that one. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I I can't believe how long they seriously let this thing go on. No, I know it. it it's bananas because... There was so many problems that were popping up, and it was not safe. And then, like I said, like, everything I listened to, everything I read about, like, they, they just kept saying, like, people tried to, yeah. you know, but it was just, they didn't care because it was cheaper. They right. didn't want to have to spend the money to build a whole new jail. Yeah, so it's like, oh, who cares about all of these people and their lives? Exactly. Let's just save some money. Right. And that's exactly what it came down to. Blech. And I mean, they had those safety issues, like I said, like right off the get-go. And a lot of those jails that were built were torn down or shut down immediately because they, they had so many issues so quickly. Right, right. <laughs> and with good reason. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> I think we needed that spooky story after all the heavy ones yeah, that we I've did. been doing. <laughs> yeah, we did. So bring us more. Okay, we'll do. 
deal. <laughs> you heard it here. All right, so make sure to follow us on any of your podcast apps. Tell us the stories that you want to hear. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, Leave us a five-star <laughs> review if you love us. Tell your friends. Tell your cats. Um, Bye. bye. <laughs>